last year I lost my younger brother to a heart failure as well. And I can tell you as the mainline support for my parents what's blatantly obvious. No parent should ever have to be burying their child. This guy was impacting so many people. Like he had such a huge future ahead of him and partly because of this pervasive hustle culture mindset, the world lost such a young creator. Now, I'm not here to go into the specifics of this tragedy, as I'm sure you're aware through the various videos that have surfaced and the news that's come up online, but I'm here to shed some light on three specific lessons that we can use to take into our own lives that can either improve us or potentially even save a life. Now, before we get started, I do want to send out my sincerest heartfelt condolences to his family and friends, his parents in particular, and while I can't relate to this directly, Last year, I did also lose my brother to heart failure as well. So I can tell you from that life-changing experience and being the mainline support for my parents in that time that, that this is probably the most difficult experience a mother and father could ever go through. No parent should ever have to be burying their child. Which brings me to the first lesson here. Something to never forget. Remember your mortality. A lot of us tend to run away from this thing, right? We don't exactly like to talk about it. We don't exactly like to think about it. And remember, I might only have like 40 or 50 more Christmases left on this planet. And the average lifespan is around 980 months, which isn't a very long time when you put it into an actual months. And unfortunately, Scott Murray, he only got to live about a third of that. So remembering your mortality can help you to make much better decisions if you're about to make a decision that's either gonna be harmful to yourself, such as repeating a bad habit, or something that could be harmful to someone else. Remembering your mortality in this instance can help you to actually steer in another direction. It can help you to enforce and create new habits, weave new habits into your life, or unwind ones that you're not particularly proud of, things that you know that you need to shift and change, such as Scott knew because he was well aware from at least what I've seen of Great New Set talking about it and other friends of his talking about it in the videos that these negative habitual patterns and was talking about doing something towards them, but you know, unfortunately our behavior always seems to try to be consistent with our self image, which is something that he built of himself being this like hustle culture guy and super into burning massive amounts of calories on a daily basis with those extended hit sessions. So I feel that remembering your mortality, however often you need to do so, can help you to make these much better decisions in your life, which not only helps you to build confidence, but you actually build greater trust with yourself and it makes it easier. It kind of creates this momentum swing in your life to make these changes even simpler. This is something I try to remember with my parents as well. If, for example, they tick me off, my patience is kind of wearing thin because I don't spend very much time with them. So I try to bring that into my mindset when I'm potentially going to react to my parents and think, I may only have 15 or 20 summers left with them. Is this really how I want to be speaking to them? Or should I just, you know, have compassion for what they don't understand of this situation? So the point that I'm making here is that our time limit on Earth is a very real thing. None of us are guaranteed to wake up tomorrow morning. Now, the second lesson that I want to bring awareness to is that even healthy habits can be taken to extremes. Healthy habits can become addictions. You know, Behaviors are addictive and our brain and our minds don't know whether they're positive or negative or, or how they're affecting us. Water intake, for example, can actually reach toxicity levels. And I knew of a certain individual that I had read about online. She had a specific addiction to drinking copious amounts of water, reaching into the 15 to 20 liter a day range, something which again is deemed relatively healthy to be taken to extremes. In Scott's case, I mean, none of this is really confirmed, but you know, when you're pumping through 1000 or 2000 calorie cardio sessions and you're doing this on a daily basis, while also having ridiculously low levels of sleep, very poor recovery, this is gonna take its toll on your body especially with how he was already maintaining single digit body fat percentages, which I personally have never reached. I've reached about 10% body fat on more than one occasion. And I can tell you that, yeah, hormones plummet. You know, your libido goes down, your energy levels go down. You have very little drive to actually want to do a lot of things in your life. But the thing is that for most of us, it's easy not to get too wrapped up into these habits because your body will make it very loud and clear if you're not getting enough sleep, if you're overtraining, if you're not recovering enough. But Scott did this for so long that he trained this directly into his behavior. 
directly into his self-image, which is something that you're always going to be consistent with as it becomes part of your subconscious programming, something that's very difficult to change without actively making changes in that direction. And I feel that this ties directly into lesson number three, the alluring, pervasive grind culture, that hustle culture sh that I feel may have very well taken him from us. It can come in so many different directions and so many different disguises, and it's really spreading around the world, unfortunately. As a growing entrepreneur, Scott was super dedicated to his YouTube channel, his Instagram website, his coaching business, and he even stated numerous times that he was available for his clients 24-7. What's worse is that I believe he didn't actually have anyone on his team to help support this. Again, I never knew him personally, but he seemed to wear this like a badge of honor possibly seeing hiring a team member as a cost versus an investment. Now, of course, I can only make these assumptions as I assume he was making revenue from YouTube AdSense, Google AdSense on his website, coaching revenue, cookbook sales, and so on. He wasn't living a lavish lifestyle as I feel was apparent, but I have no way of telling if there were any behind the scenes financial difficulties or financial struggles that he was going through. So I say this with all due respect that it's not a very big cost to hire quality offshore work to help support your growing business, to bring on and develop team members to help expand it so that you can actually serve more people without wasting yourself away. You need to have recovery. This isn't just recovery for your muscles and recovery from exercise. You need to have psychological detachment on a daily basis, I feel. This is something that I teach my personal clients to take time away to actively recover for yourself. But I digress. The biggest lesson that I want you guys to take from this is how detrimental it is to our well-being, both mental and physical, when we don't take time to unplug actual rest and recovery. To have fully dedicated time blocks disconnected from work, whether it's daily by leaving your phone on airplane mode, you know, something I do for the first part of the day, and especially the last half an hour to an hour of the day. This time is for you. It's your time to wind down. It's your time to disconnect from the electronics, to be free from the anxieties and triggers and reactivities that these devices bring into our lives. I remember specifically in one of Scott's videos that he said he had a very difficult time with turning off, difficulty with getting to sleep, even though he was absolutely exhausted most of the time. He also mentioned that he didn't take a break. He didn't have a break from working out even when he was injured and didn't take a break from work in over five years. Five years. We cannot go, go, go like this. We need to give our mind and body a break, days to retreat, days to de-stress, be in nature, and be in the full presence of other people. A lot of people don't realize this, but when you have this time to de-stress, this time to be off, when you get back into your workflow, you can actually serve people on a whole other level. You're recharged. <laughs> you have so much more to give at that point, and you don't feel so freaking wasted. So I really hope that we can take a number of lessons from this tragic loss of Scott Murray. And if there are any other that have come up for you that I haven't mentioned in this video, please do feel free to share them into the comments. But I also want to invite you guys to help Scott's channel continue to grow. The level of content and value that this guy has created on his channel has helped so many people with their weight loss struggles, which 100% deserves to keep spreading. So as soon as this video is done, head over to his channel and click all the likes, subs, and shares of his videos. And I'm sure that this will greatly help his family as well with the continued revenue earning from his YouTube channel. So if you're down to help Scott's channel continue to grow, then type Scotty to 1 million subs in the comments. Now I trust that you guys can really take this to heart, really take a moment to look into your own life as to where the necessary improvements are or shifts that you need to make. And I actually invite you to do this with a very specific question that you'll answer on paper for yourself. What one single habit could you either remove, weave into your life, or alter that you know will make an impact in your life? Something that would definitely improve your mental health and well-being. Write this out, reflect on it, and make it happen. My name is John, by the way, and I run this channel to help people become the next level version of themselves, whether it's through improving their fitness, self-esteem, mental health, and confidence levels. So if this was your first time here, then let me know by saying hi in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one, Warriors. I really do appreciate you if you've come this far. Seriously, I don't say it too often, but like your support means so much, like more than you know, okay? Thank you so much. But yes, that is the end of the video. I think it was quite a good one, to be honest. Like a day in the life, we had the workout, the recipes were next level if I do say so myself so yes if you like this style of video just like completely throw